Good morning, everyone. You already know who it is. Talking to the individual, CJBK. So, mind over matter. Cognitive neural imaging. Look that up. That's one. Um, but two, uh, my main reason for calling on really speaking out to everyone because you know, a narcissist basically has control issues, right? A narcissist will do anything in their power to make their uh, person of interest um, seem powerless or to make themselves make themselves seem like a victim or basically what they'll do they'll do anything that they can so that the narcissist themselves will not ever be seen in a negative light to anyone the narcissist is a master of deception and they're some of the most powerful liars because they promise and they do so much good, quote unquote, for people, but they're always looking to see if they can actually have control over people. And then if they can't control you, they will do everything in their power to try to destroy your character so that they can turn other people against you. This is a true definition of what a narcissist is. So, let me get spiritual for a moment, right? So, I'm going to start back from the beginning, right? And like I said, I'm sticking to the truth the entire time. No matter what's being said about me and how many people know this false information, I'm going to tell you the truth again. And I'm going to keep saying it until I take my very last breath or they find some way to create a synthetic crime and get me locked up for something I didn't do. So, remember, I told you there was a situation back in my, you know, in my building, my, um, back in my building where a friend and I, we was, we was in my, we was in my apartment. And we was actually about to leave the house. We was actually about to leave and go hang out, whatever. Then all of a sudden, this woman, I hear this woman's voice screaming in the hallway, someone call the police, he hit me. Help, someone call the police, he hit me. So me and my friend, we looked at each other like, what the fuck? So I go and stand by the door and I'm listening. You know, I'm listening in. This is March of 2020, right? This is before COVID quarantine really started, at least here in New York, right? So, um, I'm listening by the door, and my friend's like, "Chris, you gonna look outside? We don't play that. We don't play that. Men, men in men in Houston don't play that shit. You know, we'll fuck a motherfucker up for fucking for for hitting women." So I was like, "Ah, oh, shit. All right, I'm gonna look outside." Then. So I look outside. And there's like um, an older woman, looked like somebody's mother. Then there's like three dudes. One of them is holding the cell phone to this, to this, you know, to the woman that, that that did the screaming and yelling in the hallway, right? So I'm like, she's like, she like, she's like, give me my phone, give me my phone. And he's like, like when I stepped out, when I stepped out the apartment, he kind of looked like he tried to play off real real, you know, calm and smooth. Remember what I said about narcissists, right? He tried to like get real, he tried to play off real smooth and calm and whatnot. And then as I'm standing in the hallway, my friend, she comes out from behind me. She's like, girl, you all right? You know, <laughs> and uh, whatchamacallit. So I'm basically just standing there observing the whole thing. And I'm like, I don't see, it doesn't look like a, a struggle or anything. She's like, give me my phone. He's like holding it in his hand or whatever. 
Then eventually he gives her her phone back. And then for whatever reason, my friend, this is, I'm telling you God's honest truth. My friend, and, and, I, and I'm really hoping that she didn't set me up. I feel like, but no, I don't think she was a part of it. I don't know. You never know. This is, this is, this is a secret society, so you never know. My friend then says, Chris, let me borrow your phone so I can call the police, which is odd as hell because I didn't see nothing that looked that serious to call the police with, right? You know, I didn't, I didn't see any marks on her face or whatever, but my friend apparently says she seen blood on the woman's hand. And I'm like, blood on her hand. And I'm like, this is at least at the time when I had my glasses and everything. So I'm like, all right, you know, I just, I just gave her my phone. And it's odd because my phone, my friend, she always got her phone on her, you know? But anyway, so, you know, um, moments later, um, you know, we go back inside the apartment. We like, yo, this is crazy. You know, I, I don't know about all this, blah, blah, blah. And then she's like, nah, cause you know, I've been in her situation before when men be hitting on you and they, and they try to play off like they was the victim and stuff like that. Remember what I told you about narcissists? So, um, so I'm basically like trying to figure out like, okay, well, I get, well, we should, we should we wait to see what happens, blah, blah, blah. But no more than about five, 10 minutes later, I hear like keys jingling and stuff like that. Three officers, it's the girl, she's walking in front. I look through the peephole girl walking in front of three cops right i don't know what else happened after that i don't know what else happened after that now this is where i'm a look i told you i'm an open book i ain't got shit to hide right so during quarantine right you know i wasn't working you know whether remotely or had a essential job you know i was trying to find you know work because I don't necessarily like not working. You know, that's that's not who I am. I always like working, you know. So, I don't know, like, especially after getting the stimulus and stuff like that, I, like, I don't know. I kind of just got complacent with just being home. So, you know, I'm not going to lie. Like, yeah, I probably drank more than I ever used to because, you know, I'm home a lot more, you know. I did probably smoke a little bit more because I'm home a lot more. You know, I ordered out food a lot more because I'm home a lot more. You know, I did do some positive things with the money, you know, that I was what I was getting. But yeah, I'm saying all that to make sure y'all remember what I'm telling you is the truth. And I don't have nothing to hide. So whatever lies that y'all got circulating out there, yes, y'all the, the chief handler, all y'all out there with y'all electronic devices, and you got all your hired gang stalkers out in the streets. So, or organized harassers, or secret society, or you know, whatever, whatever y'all call yourselves. You know, the fact that I know that there's children and single mothers being abused by the same technology, elderly people being abused by the same technology. And I kid you not, I wouldn't even be surprised if the same technology is what's being used against people to make people have more severe, you know, symptoms to COVID itself because this technology is basically, uh, I mean, long story short, it's basically a hacking of a person's central nervous system, you know? So now, um, okay. So I get it, you know, and in Christianity, they will call it backsliding where you basically, um, are being, you know, you're being flooded with, you know, all kinds of vices and stuff. Um, knowing that you're a spiritual person and, you know, you do have faith in God and everything of that sort. You know, I was backsliding. I'm not going to lie. You know, 
I lived the I lived the lifestyle that you know I was never a violent person, but I enjoyed having fun. I enjoyed engaging in my vices. You know, um, never really got on got into hard drugs or anything. Most I ever did was like weed. You know, so weed, alcohol, and you know, I'll admit, you know, I used to look. I used to have a lot of sex. I'm not even gonna lie about that. You know, so. Now, let's fast forward to about late September, early October of 2020, right? I'm coming back to my building and I see a small group of people just sitting out front, right? Now, um, as I'm walking, as I'm walking up to the building or to my front door, I basically... You know, I'm looking at the group to see if I know anybody. I don't think I do. Then all of a sudden, I hear somebody yell out loud, this faggot ass me. And I'm like, I stopped for a second, but I was like, Chris, nah. <laughs> just keep going because you don't know who they talking to or what they could be talking about. So just mind your business. Because that's what I do. I mind my business. I don't, I, don't be having, I don't involve myself in other people's business, you know? So, you know, next thing you know, after that statement... About a couple days later, that's when the synthetic telepathy, the V2K, you know, voice to voice to skull, voice to God, you know, situation happened, um, where somebody transmitted some frequencies into my mind, saying, "Oh, we're gonna shoot you in your sleep. We're gonna shoot you in your sleep." And I'm I'm sitting in my crib by myself, in my first apartment where I live alone, in a whole new neighborhood where I don't really know that many people. Somebody told me they're gonna shoot me in my sleep. I'm not gonna lie. First time it happened, I thought it was somebody outside my outside, um, basically saying that they was gonna do some something to me. And I was like, fuck that, ain't nobody gonna catch me in my sleep. So I went outside. <laughs> I went outside looking to see if I could find somebody um, you know, saying this shit. But when I got outside, it wasn't a soul outside. So I'm like, I must be bugging. I must be bugging. So then I come back upstairs and then I hear the fucking transmissions again. See, back then I didn't know what it was called or nothing like that. I thought, I thought, you know, I thought, hell, maybe, maybe I backslid too much. And, <laughs> and, and basically, uh, I thought maybe I backslid too much. And, you know, the devil was definitely, definitely trying to have fun with me even though it kind of still is. So now I'm thinking to myself, yo, I get back upstairs and I hear the transmissions again to my son. We told you, you're not going to find us. We told you, you're not going to find us. We're going to shoot you in your sleep. And I'm just like, yo, what is happening right now? So funny thing is that was one voice. It was a male's voice, right? Um, And then started to hear a woman's voice after that. She's like, oh, he about to cry. Oh. And I'm like, yo, what the hell? She's like, oh, he feel better because he hear a black woman voice now. And I'm like, what the hell? And then I'm thinking about it and I'm like, yo, this is crazy as hell. So I'm like, all right, you know what? I'm about to go to sleep because I don't know what the hell is going on. I'm about to go to sleep. Maybe, maybe... I don't know, maybe I hit, maybe I hit some bad weed or something. I don't know, you know. So now pay attention to how coherent and normal I'm sounding right now. Or in general, in all my videos, because there's nothing wrong with me. That's what I'm trying to tell people. And it's, this is a very consistent story with several hundred thousand, if not millions of people across the world. So... It got to be something if millions of people are saying the same thing and then they're being medically misdiagnosed as like, you know, paranoid schizophrenics and shit like that. So anyway, so yeah, I wake up the next morning and I still hear the voices. I'm like, what? Or I'm going to just say transmissions because you got to understand this is technological. Oh, look at these beauties. Oh, oh, how you doing? <laughs> you know, 
so I love beaches. <laughs> so, you know, um, yeah, I'm basically like trying to figure out, all right, whatever the hell is going on, it hasn't left my mind yet, right? So I said, you know what, I'm gonna go to the house. Well, I went to my mom's house first because I thought, you know, I was like, maybe I need to get prayed for because I was like, I don't know what's happening to me, but something just ain't right, something ain't right. So I go to my mom's house and I tell her what's happening to me. I'm like, I'm like, yo, Ma, there's something strange going on. You know, I started hearing like these these voices in my head with transmissions, um, frequency transmissions. And and I'm like, you know, all of a sudden, as I'm sitting in her living room telling her what was what I'm going through, all of a sudden I hear somebody yell out, he's snitching. And I'm like, the fuck? I looked around and looked out the window, and I'm like. He's snitching. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? So I'm like, yo, this is crazy. So blah, blah, blah. You know, my mom, she prayed for me, whatever. I go into my old room to go to sleep. And as I'm trying to lay down and go to sleep, I'm hearing, you snitching now. Now we're going to have to do something to your mother. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Sorry, I, this this is some really emotional stuff. So I, I curse when I'm when I get a little emotional, you know. So, you know, they like, oh, now we gonna do something to your mother. So, what I did was I was like, all right, I don't live out here, so I need to let a couple people know who do live out here. Look, if anything happens to my mom, this is where she live at, right? So. I needed people, I needed somebody who, who still lived in Brooklyn to be able to like, like if something happened, they could keep their ears to the ground for me to let me know if, if what happened. You know, I mean, I'm not, like I said, I'm not a violent person, but who knows what will happen to a person if they mother get killed, you know? So, but now I'm like, um, you know, the next morning I decide, let me go. Let me go to the hospital. I'm not going. I'm not even going to name the hospitals yet. I'm not going to name the hospitals yet. But I go to a hospital, right? And I, I'm thinking, yo, let me go and get a psychological evaluation because maybe I need to, you know, maybe I need to have an MRI, you know, or something like that to make sure I didn't, you know, do nothing to myself, right? So, boom. Um. I go to the hospital. They don't. They they didn't even give me an MRI or anything at that hospital. So they basically just like had me come in. And then when I told them the story, they, and this is what they did. This is going to sound so strange, right? So when I got back, well, when I went to the hospital, right? I told one nurse she br she brought me into this room, right? where it was kind of, it was kind of like a private room, whatever. I told her what happened to me. And then, um, I told her what happened to me. And then next thing you know, she gets up, she like sighs and then she gets up. And then she walks me to a different part of the hospital, which is basically like the ER, right? She walks me to the hospital. I mean, walks me to the ER and it's crowded, full of mad people. You know, they're doing mad, you know, every, there's, there's probably like, like 80 people in there. there. There's so many things going on all at once, right? Then she turns to this table full of a whole bunch of other doctors, nurses, whatever, medical professionals, whatever. And she's like, all right, now tell them what you told me. I kid you not. So I tell them the story and the weirdest thing happened. It was like everybody in the hospital like everybody stopped moving like you ever think about like those scenes in a movie where like like if you were to press pause on life everybody stops well it was like everybody stopped what they were doing all looked at me at one time and then kept going with whatever they were doing i was like now you know, going back to the present time, you know, you learn about, you know, hive mind, 
hive mind, you know, uh, societies or hive mind, you know, um, technology and stuff like that. Now, so, um, yeah, uh, basically, you know, I'm not going to go to all the hospital stories, but yeah, just to come back now to the present, I'm just like, yo, um, I ain't never been a snitch a day in my life, right? But the one thing I can't allow to happen is someone getting shots at me or trying to force me to do something that I don't want to do. Because what they, what they, you know, what they said after I left the hospital or the, um, the people behind the transmissions, what they said was, well, since you snitched to the doctor, you might as well become a cop. You either become a cop or you're just going to be a snitch for the rest of your life. So I'm just like, I'm just like, what? What are you talking about? I don't know shit about nothing. I didn't, I don't even know who the hell you are. So what the hell am I snitching on? I'm like, I don't even know what the hell is going on. So now I'm like, yo, this is crazy. Um, I'm basically at this point now where, oh, well, since I didn't want to become a police officer now, you know they're gonna they're gonna uh harass my my all my electronic devices they're you know manipulating the electrical current you know in my home so that you know the electromagnetic um field radiation becomes intensified and you know now i'm having like issues with my my hands and my nerves and stuff and um also like I learned that they have these uh, capabilities of where they can actually find, um, locate, you know, frequencies using probably like a infrared or something like that. Um, and using a combination of like an EEG device and uh, a fMRI um, tech devices. And they're basically like, they can find every cell or every organs, you know, um, vibrational frequency and then alter that so that the cell can either be healed or it can be destroyed you know destroyed whether it's um whether it becomes cancerous or just basically um you know just just gets it just dies off right now i'm telling you there are patents for these things and trust and believe when they the saying goes whatever that is created that can heal it can also be used to kill now i'm gonna get spiritual again for a moment right now i get it during you know during the quarantine and stuff i definitely was backsliding i was you know i was indulging in my vices a lot more because well i wasn't doing anything all i was doing was just sitting at home quarantining and um you know i'd probably take a, a walk around the block like once a day or something like that but then you know i get it i was abusing my vices so what did, what do they say an, an idle mind is the devil's playground so really um they basically were um uh, well basically i was you know i was left for the devil to play with you know and I was engaging in different vices and everything. And um, funny thing is, uh, I think that because even though I had my vices, I still was never a violent person. I still was never someone who intentionally tries to do harm to anyone. And even to this day, I'm still that very same person that everybody, that everyone has met at, you know, in their life. I'm still that very same person. Never been a problem to nobody never been a problem to nobody and then now all of a sudden and and every time i think about it, i just always go back to that march 2020 event that that you know it was like a couple days before my birthday i just keep thinking about that incident with that woman and i'm just thinking and i think to myself like damn why did i let her call the police with my phone because i feel like that has something to do with it then next thing you know I realized if the devil could not get me with my vices to try to change me into a different person, then the devil was going to take someone that he's already manipulated, give them some power, technology, 
and then use them to actually try to destroy me in any way possible. Because I don't have nothing to lie for. And I don't have nothing to hide for. So I'm just like, they're doing all of this. They're doing all of this just to see, just to prove a point that, you know, they have power. Well, I'm literally one person. I'm literally one person, right? You know, and uh, it's amazing how many, you know, other targeted individuals that I've found uh, over the over the span of what? 10, no, over the span of 11 months, because I haven't even reached a full year yet. This is, I'm still in my first year of being targeted. And I've learned so much that most targeted individuals have took for like five, 10 years before they figured some of this stuff out. So that's why I just say, look, God willing, I keep my mind focused on God and, and just making sure that like at the end of the day, you know, God is always going to take care of his children as long as they stay focused on him. So, um, I mean, you know what? Look, I ain't never been no snitch a day in my life. But when I'm finding out that people are doing secret shit like this and then they're also using it against women, single mothers and children and elderly people and then forcing people to like the crazy thing is I never knew so much about frequencies until all of this started to happen i didn't know anything about emotions or actual frequencies that are um encoded in the brain or how um memories and thoughts memories and thoughts are actually encoded in frequencies in the brain everything about life in itself are all operating on frequencies like literal frequencies like anything from hertz you know, to gigahertz, you know, or uh, is it not, um, not gigahertz, well, maybe gigahertz, but, or kilohertz, everything runs on frequencies, so, I'm just thinking to myself, like, yo, God is definitely testing me, God is definitely testing me, and, Man, like when all this started, I feel like my whole spiritual essence just like kicked up a whole hundred and twenty percent after this because I was just like, yo, for someone that doesn't do anything to anybody, it's a lot happening to me. So I'm like, you know what? They all gonna they they all gonna basically um, do what they want they all going to do what they want and i said well i ain't hiding y'all know where i'm at at all times y'all got the whole remote neural monitoring thing going on down pat you know y'all could either use somebody in the street to kill me off or y'all could either do it with your technology i already know there's two different ways this this can go if they don't do it that way they'll try to find a way to send place you know do a synthetic crime against me to get me locked up for something i didn't do and then i'll probably get killed in in jail or in prison i already know how many ways this can go so uh at the end of the day god willing i'm keeping my faith up high my frequencies are high honestly like and then it's like they're 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 trying to intimidate someone that grew up around intimidation his entire life just because i don't i don't use it just because i don't try to be an intimidation intimidative person doesn't mean that i can't take it you know because the, the thing that gets me the most is they're doing they're hiding though because i know i know what the dude looked like and i always think to myself if i ever seen this dude in the street but i just say you know what lord you don't want me to do that because i've seen this girl a few times you know the one that the one that was you know um that was on the transmission too talking about some you know oh he he happy now because he hear a black woman's voice i already know what she looked like but i'm not that's not that's not my lane i'm not a violent person and i don't do anything to anybody so but at the same time i'm just like it's crazy how i grew up where like if you got a problem with somebody you you go and handle it yourself but how can you handle it yourself when someone is hiding and they're throwing, they're throwing stones while hiding their hands. That's the part that pisses me off the most. Because I feel like if I ever heard his voice in the street and I see his face, 
<laughs> but uh, I know God don't want me to go that route. So I'm gonna just go ahead and just like keep doing what I can, keep helping other target individuals because a lot of people, a lot of people are going, you know, literally, you know, having their lives destroyed behind this stuff. So um, yeah, I'm gonna leave it at that. I'm gonna leave it at that. And the sad part is a lot of people don't know that these that things, sometimes you're not, I've realized with, with all this stuff that's happening, you may actually not be having a bad day. You might have actually done something or there might be something about you that someone don't like and they want to try to break you down. So what they'll do is they'll basically have like a whole system of where they will use people in technology to try to destroy your life as you know it you know so damn it's a lot of mosquitoes but anyway yeah um i'm sitting here waiting for this next uh this next uh round of deliveries you know like i said i work i work i got no problem working you know i don't like asking people for money i don't beg people for money if I could find work, I will always work for my money. You know, if I could do it as honestly as possible, then that's what I'll do. But yeah, yeah, that's just me telling the story again because, you know, they're going to keep pushing out these lies, trying to see if they could destroy my character. Yeah, the streets probably don't like me and they don't, they probably don't respect me no more, whatever. But I would love to see what other people would do if they were in my situation that's all i'm saying i would love to see what other people would do if they were in my situation so um as always take life one breath one thought one step one day at a time peace